Do you think ultimately consciousness is, a, is an evolutionary advantage in the long term or a disadvantage? Well, that remains to be seen. <laughs> of course, but I want to ask you to... Well, it depends we, on we whether we like destroy the environment to the point where our kind will no longer exist. Yeah, so I think it does seem in the short term consciousness was in short term I mean the last few million years right. in terms of the human evolution and becoming the dominant species right. in the planet. But in the long term, it may not be it may be much more efficient to be a flatworm or 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 or, or something else. Well, we know, for example, that you know when you have drastic climactic conditions, large energy demanding mm -hmm. organisms don't survive. The dinosaurs didn't do well, but tiny little mammals that had low energy needs did survive. So as we continue to change the environment in which we live, each time we lose a species, and we're losing a lot of them now, it makes a subtle difference in the ecosystem. And so at some point, we're going to have an environment in which the genes that we have are not the ones that are good for surviving. And so whether our kind will continue to survive, I mean, the, you know, it's been an astrophysicist, I forget his name, said the Earth is going to be fine. You know, the, we're not going to destroy the Earth, but it's not going to be an Earth we can live on. Well, that's going to happen in the long term, no matter yeah, what we no do. Matter. That's the point. The it doesn't question matter. is, are we like hurtling yeah, ourselves yeah, towards the you know, and But the interesting thing is that because of consciousness, we can change the environment that we live in. Right. So once, so if we're, we're not, at, if it's well, true, every if we're not well, changes its environment, well, but we but do it in a grand we, way. Yeah, we can adapt. We can completely change the environment. And, and mess it up. And, and that's what we're doing in a bad sense, but yeah. we can do it. We can move to a different location, et cetera. So, but, I mean, consciousness is responsible for our greatest achievements as a species, and art, literature, mathematics, physics, every so medicine. What it means to but be human. also for narcissism, selfishness, greed, hatred, uh, you know, murder. But in an evolutionary sense, it's not only just responsible for what we value to be human, because right. consciousness and being human are the same right. thing. It's probably what makes us, has made us so evolutionarily successful to be able to be one of the only species of know that can, uh, except for maybe bacteria, that can inhabit the entire planet effectively because of its consciousness. Well, the other thing that we're the only, I think, species that can do is um, uh, decide to terminate ourselves. Yeah. And at, at a as an intentional act, exactly that we uh, that that we can uh, either on an individual level or a human a level with level. nuclear weapons or something, we can choose to do something that, in an evolutionary sense, is is prohibited, which right. is to 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 stop reproduction. <laughs> and this goes back, you know, again to the the first cells and the first multicellular organisms and how they acquire genetic physiological compatibility. But with the arrival of consciousness in the human brain, self autonomic consciousness, that was a rogue system that could make decisions that go against the better good of the entire rest of the body. Yeah, the rogue decisions, which may be, as you say, responsible for good and bad. Right.